St. Basil's Church on the campus of the University of St. Michael's College in downtown Toronto, the National Catholic Broadcasting Council presents Daily Mass. The televising of today's Mass is made possible by a contribution from three donors. The first are Case and Gertrude Gernewagen, parishioners of St. Patrick's Parish in Railton, Ontario. For all their families strengthening and return to the faith, for peace and health, especially those suffering from Parkinson's, diabetes, cancer, and heart disease, for deceased friends and family, and with prayers and thanksgiving for blessings received in honor of Case and Gertrude's 68th wedding anniversary, which they are celebrating today. The second are Ivan and Diane de Rushe from Ottawa, Ontario, in thanksgiving for blessings received and for the living and deceased members of their families. The third is anonymous donor from Oakville, Ontario, for the repose of the soul of her husband, Patrick, who died January the 24th, 2002, for the deceased members of both families, for the strengthening and return to the faith of members of her family, and in thanksgiving for blessings received. Our thanks to our donors for this gift. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Today we celebrate the feast of St. Francis de Sales, bishop, founder, and inspirer of religious communities, spiritual writer, doctor of the church. Let us now acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of hearts. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God of mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who for the salvation of souls willed that the bishop, St. Francis de Sales, become all things to all, graciously grant that following his example, we may always display the gentleness of your charity in the service of our neighbor. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Jesus, because he continues forever, is able for all time to save those who approach God through him, since he always lives to make intercession for them. For it was fitting that we should have such a high priest, holy, blameless, and undefiled, separated from sinners, and exalted above the heavens. Unlike the other high priest, he has no need to offer sacrifices day after day. <clears throat> First, for his own sins, and then for those of the people. For he did this once for all when he offered himself. For the law appoints as high priest those who are subject to weakness. But the word of the oath, which came later than the law, appoints a son who has been made perfect forever. Now, the main point in what we are saying is this. We have such a high priest, one who is seated at the right hand of the throne of the majesty in heavens, a minister in the sanctuary, and the true tent that the Lord and not any mortal has set up. For every high priest is appointed to offer gifts and sacrifices. Hence, it is necessary for this priest also to have something to offer. Now, if he were on earth, he would not be a priest at all, since there are priests who offer gifts according to the law. 
They offer worship in a sanctuary that is a sketch and shadow of the heavenly one. For Moses, when he was about to erect the tent, was warned, see that you make everything according to the pattern that was shown you on the mountain. But Jesus has now obtained a more excellent ministry, and to that degree, he is the mediator of a better co covenant, which has been enacted through better promises. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus departed with his disciples to the sea, and a great multitude from Galilee followed him. Hearing all that he was doing, they came to him in great numbers from Judea, Jerusalem, Idumea, beyond the Jordan, and the region around Tyre and Sidon. Jesus told his disciples to have a boat ready for him because of the crowd so that they would not crush him. For he had cured many so that all who had diseases pressed upon him to touch him. Whenever the unclean spirits saw Jesus, they fell down before him and shouted, You are the Son of God. But he sternly ordered them not to make him known. The Gospel of the Lord. In his efforts to encourage believers to remain faithful to their commitment in Christ, to Christ, in spite of difficulties and persecution, the author of Hebrews develops a remarkable vision of Christ as the great high priest. 
His is the only book in the New Testament in which Jesus is so described. In the Gospel accounts of his public life, it's clear that in terms of the religious world in which he lived, no one would have thought of Jesus as a priest. He did not belong to the priestly tribe of Levi, nor did he exercise his ministry in the temple of Jerusalem with its rich and varied sacrificial ritual. His ministry was much more like that of a prophet or a teacher. Paul seems to have been the first to have recognized in the love that brought Jesus to his death a sacrifice, an act of worship, a sin offering by means of which our sins are forgiven and we are reconciled with God. Hebrews builds on that idea. If it is possible to think of the life of Jesus, a life of faith and obedience, a life that comes to its climax in the self-giving unto death on the cross as a sacrifice, then it is also possible to think of Jesus as a priest. The point of reference Hebrews used in developing its argument is the ritual of the Day of Atonement, the one day of the year on which the high priest enters into the Holy of Holies, the inner sanctuary of the temple, there to sprinkle the blood of sacrificed animals at the base of the Ark of the Covenant. Whereas in the past, the ritual was repeated every year, Jesus, Hebrews insists, performs it once and for all. His is the perfect sacrifice that brings about definitive reconciliation between God and humanity. The readings from Hebrews earlier this week all apply to Jesus, a phrase from Psalm 110, You are a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. The reference is to a mysterious person identified as the priest of the Most High God who appears in the story of Abraham and to whom the patriarch pays homage. Because nothing is said in the scriptures about where he came from or where he went, people indulged in all kinds of speculations about him in the time of Jesus. Hebrews evokes those speculations in order to suggest the superiority of the priesthood of Jesus to that of the Jerusalem temple. Today's reading emphasizes the priesthood of Christ is an eternal priesthood. Through his resurrection, he has entered into the heavenly world, whereas our reading puts it, he is seated at the right hand of the throne of the majesty, there to make intercession for us. The authors of the New Testament use a variety of images to understand and to present to us the mystery of Jesus and the significance of his life for us. He is a prophet, for example, and a teacher who not only proclaims God's word and wisdom, but is that word and that wisdom in human form. He is the servant of God who gives his life and ransom for the many. He is the Messiah whose appearance marks the beginning of the final coming of God's kingdom into the world. To say that Jesus is the great high priest is to say that in his life he offered perfect worship and praise to God, that through his sacrifice atonement is made for the sins of humanity. For the author of Hebrews, the priestly act of Jesus is both a once and for all event that took place in the past and a continuing reality. Christ lives, he insists. He lives in God. He lives to intercede for us. It is above all in the Eucharist that we encounter the priesthood of Christ. Here we not only recall and give thanks for his self-giving unto death, but in some way are drawn into it. Through our sharing and communion, we open ourselves to him as he gives himself to us as the bread of life. 
Our celebration of the death and resurrection of Jesus takes place within the context of a great prayer of praise and thanksgiving. Here, our prayers are united to his prayer, in, within, through him, and in the power of his spirit, we offer God the sacrifice of praise. For believers, Christ is, above all, the risen Christ, the heavenly Christ, the one whom Hebrews describes as the eternal high priest. Our life And our struggles, our suffering and pain, as well as all the positive things that we experience are joined to his self-offering and given eternal significance. In the Eucharist, Christ both draws our prayer and praise into his worship and gives himself to us so that our lives might be transformed and become more like his. Jesus exercised his priesthood not in a temple, but on the roads and in the synagogues of Galilee, in the town squares where he preached and healed the sick, in the homes of those with whom he ate. It was his life, including but not only its climax in his death, that constituted his sacrifice. So it is with us. Through baptism, we share in the priesthood of Christ. We do so not only in our prayer and worship, but also in the way we live. The more our lives become like his, the more they are marked by things like courage and fidelity, compassion and mercy, generosity and love, the more deeply we we be drawn into his sacrifice and into his priesthood. It is in this profoundly spiritual, life-embracing sense that we are all called in Christ to be priests. Let us now in faith and trust present before God our needs. For all of us that are sharing in this Eucharist will draw us more deeply into the self-giving love at the heart of the priesthood of Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, For the intentions of our donors and of those who have asked us to pray for them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, For families that their struggles and tensions will draw their members closer to one another. Let us pray to the Lord. For our deceased relatives and friends and for those who have died this past night, that they will be brought to eternal life in God, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Gracious God, we ask you to hear and grant these prayers as well as the more personal ones that each one of us has in his or her own heart. All this we pray through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. With the mingling of this water, partakers Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be made acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Through this saving sacrifice which we offer you, O Lord, kindle in our hearts that divine fire of the Holy Spirit with which you wonderfully inflamed the most gentle soul of St. Francis de Sales. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For as on the festival of St. Francis de Sales you bid your church rejoice, so to you strengthen her by the example of his holy life. 
Teach her by his words of preaching and keep her safe in answer to his prayers. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise as without end we acclaim. indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, we pray these gifts by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more, giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and serve you. Humbly we, humbly we pray that partaking in the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Benedict, our Pope, and Thomas, our bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus, you said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you my peace, I give you. Look not upon our sins, but upon the faith of your church 
and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. For those of you at home, join with me now in this prayer of St. Bernard of Clairvaux. Remember, most gracious Virgin Mary, that never was it known that anyone who fled to your protection, implored your help, and sought your intercession was left unaided. Inspired with this confidence, I fly unto you, O Virgin of Virgins, my mother, to you I come, before you I stand, sinful and sorrowful. O Mother of the Word incarnate, despise not my petitions, but in your mercy hear and answer me. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that through the sacrament we have received, we may imitate on earth the charity and meekness of St. Francis de Sales, and so attain, like him, the glory of heaven. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Our thanks to three donors. The first are Case and Gertrude Grenowagen, parishioners of St. Patrick's Parish in Railton, Ontario. The second are Ivan and Diane de Rushe from Ottawa, Ontario. And the third, an anonymous donor from Oakville, Ontario. And it's their generous contributions that made the televising of today's Mass possible. If you're planning to attend the Daily Mass at St. Basil's, it's important that you call our office at 1-888-383-6277. So